you lubricate the bearings because um, with the bearing we exam, they don't, they don't have uh, the condition of lubrication. We find out if you re also depends on the quantity of the lubrication you, you put into again. So I, I don't know the answer whether the relubrication will help in the process. And you have only uh, checked uh, uh, bearings with uh, uh, seals made with rubber, so sliding, not, not with labyrinths, I mean, so you have only considered rubber seals. Yeah, they okay. use the rubber seal to seal the, okay. the bearings okay. itself. Yeah. Yes, uh, I think Martin has a question here. Please, could you move into the stage? Because it's the questioning for all of you. <laughs> so don't, don't try to hide. <laughs> I have 16 questions I will ask if no one else does it. So <laughs> please, Martin. Uh, I, I would like to talk about the white etching layers. Okay. And I, it was a very interesting presentation. And um, of course, the concept, if the um, anisotropic layer is consumed by a white etching layer, then you don't have anything that guides the cracks anymore. And then you can get them right down. Uh, that was very interesting to see. I hope you can carry on your work and uh, see if you can find more uh, evidence for this and to see if, if you're right with your, uh, with your idea that the ones is the squats and the others is the studs. So it's, it's very interesting. So thanks. Okay. Uh, I hope it's working. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Actually, this work, we would like thanks for Grass at first. Actually, he do the extensive review for Sinichuan. We continue his ideas, try to confirm what his finding is real or not. Majority right now we can see is uh, in Sinichuan, we distinguish the RCF and squat. All talking to squat, more reference to the start. Even today I say we, can, we say two kinds of white and layer, one generated typical start, but another one we call the squat, but still caused by the white and layers. Answer your questions, right now we do a continued monitoring process. We try to monitor the white and layer formation from the virgin track. And then what is changed due to the accumulated tonnage? Right now, we already have some initial results. Hopefully, in next conference or next time, I can give you more results about the generation of the white titan layer and how it's finally contribute to the real squad, OK, or start. OK. Thanks. Yes, I also have a question to the white aging layers. Um, you say there are two types of white aging layers, a, a thick one that comes from breaking of the trains or sliding, uh, and the other type is more thin layer. And uh, do you have, uh, do you know where this comes from, this uh, thin layers of white aging layers? What, where can it come from? Uh, is it? Actually, we try to classify what really formation mechanism for these two really different white titan layer. Say the first one, we very thick, coming from the high breaking area. We confirm it's caused by the thermal is because we find retaining austenite. It's where is retaining austenite must coming from the thermal. But for the very thin one, we try to identify what is cause. First we find there are deformed polarized structure in the transition zone, which indicate a kind of plastic deformation. But in addition to this, we focus on white titan layer itself. We find this white titan layer. There are severe twinnings caused by the severe plastic deformation. We analyze the synchrotron signals. We find actually this white titan layer is caused by the rolling contact fatigue. But even if it's caused by the rolling contact fatigue, we still thinking it's a difference with some more people talking to the squad caused by the purely rolling contact fatigue without white down layer, you're going to the squad. We thinking it's uh, even if you have rolling contact fatigue, you generate white down layer first, and then you have cracking, you're going to the materials, you generate squad or start. Yeah. Okay, do we have more questions? Yeah. I happen to have a question also to the same author. <laughs> now, Our next question will not be to that author. <laughs> okay. um, I would like to trigger you to make your, your, your statement a bit more specific. 
So uh, what I will do, I've been thinking about it, I will make also a statement and I will ask you to comment on it. You could also say that the white etching layer is a kind of auto protection of the material, of the real material against additional wear. You understand? So I try to, to highlight the possible favorable role of the white etching layer. Yes, and good. So that's a kind of statement and it says the opposite. So <laughs> I would like to trigger you to comment on that. Okay, yeah. Actually, when we do the analysis, we also find there are lots of arguments. Some people argue actually the thick white edge layer can form a protection layer. See, this truly is possible for me. It's possible. If you have a continuing white edge layer, it can protect the surface. But the key thing is so far we find the protection effect is very limited because white edge layer is very brittle. Doesn't matter you are generated by thermal or by the rolling contact fatigue. It's brittle. It's generated crack very quickly. So either we say it's protection, we more consider it's a, a trigger of the crack initiation. So maybe we can agree that it is a protection, but a very bad one. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Ok Tao. Very good answers. But now Andrea has a question for another author, I think. About the cracks in the crossing. Um, if I am not wrong, your cracks are pretty shallow, so the surface, they don't penetrate deep inside. And uh, you have found that the uh, base material is around 10 millimeters down from the top surface, so yes. it is not disturbed, let me say, by the plastic uh, deformation of the grains. Mm, do you mean that by milling the crossing by approximately 10 millimeters and rebuilding the crossing geometry by welding as usual, uh, we, the, that kind of component can be restored and put back into service. Um, you mean to say like since the plastic deformed layer is around 10 millimeter, if we can remove this 10 millimeter then? Yes, this is something that already exists in, uh, in the market. But then in this case, as you can see the crack which was there, it was only limited to around 2 to 3 millimeters from the surface. And generally if we can remove that layer, then I think it's fine. I mean, we don't need to remove that much uh, material from the surface. But that limited uh, depth can be assessed only for, only for example by eddy current, not by ultrasonic uh, means. So yeah. it means that it cannot be found by usual ultrasonic probes used in, in, in the railway field. So we have to use eddy check, eddy current systems. Eddy current, okay, yes. thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Any questions to Changi or uh, Chiling? Um, yeah, I have a question to the second author. So basically you have been testing the effects of indentations on the rail on rolling contact fatigue. Uh, yes. But the way that you produce these indentations, I think, is quite relevant. Mm -hmm. So you, basically you have produced these indentations by a kind of shot peening, we may say. Uh, sorry, I have to not so get you your point. You have been shooting particles against the rail surface and then you have been testing what is the effect. Yes, I have um, artificial de defects on the uh, real surface. Yeah, but you have made them in a very specific way. Uh, it is uh, on the middle of the, uh, you know, uh, the, t uh, the experiment uh, is, not, is a night contact. Uh, the, 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 uh, the dent is uh, in the middle of the uh, night, uh, yeah. in the middle of the specimen. But this, but this I understand, but you, you, you were shooting these particles yes. with a certain velocity yes. on the surface in order to get the indentation, true? Yes. Okay, but I, I was thinking, what is the practical relevance of this? Does this happen in practice? Uh, you know, uh, you, you, you mean that the, pro uh, the, the impact particles? Yeah, how, how big is this? Can such an impact as you uh, the, the size of the particles, you, you mean? No, more the velocity, so mass and velocity. Well, you have a velocity in, in if you get the infield and you have a ballast stone and it's getting crushed by the passing yeah, wheel. Are they similar to those load situations? Oh, sorry. Uh, it means in your test, you, you uh, shoot a particle or uh, hit yeah, a particle. Hit it, it's, yeah. it's, it's where is that comparable to what you have on the wheel rail interface where you get a ballast particle and then the wheel rolls over that one? Is, do you think the loading situations are comparable? 
Uh, sorry, uh, this Shani. Uh, I, I, I use, firstly, I use a pendulum to, uh, uh, with the, uh, use the, uh, sorry, uh, use, uh, use the pendulum to impact it on the uh, real surface. Yeah. Is that right? Uh, Do you uh, think that that mm -hmm. loading is mm -hmm. similar to the loading where you have a ballast stone and a wheel that rolls yes, over Yes, uh, that's, a, that's a problem, yes, that uh, I'm figuring out to, um, uh, apply this uh, this uh, result to from the experiment as uh, from laboratory result to the real eye. Personally, I find that uh, um, I think that is the similar uh, similar to uh, to the real real uh, real, uh, real, uh, real uh, in the uh, real real way eye. Uh, the impact the node the node the node uh, uh, type the node type to impact it. But uh, um, I'm not sure, what, is, what I'm not sure about is uh, uh, the size of the dent because, uh, you know, uh, the, this experiment, uh, and the experiment I have carried on is, uh, um, is small scale, so uh, with an eye contact. Uh, if, uh, if, an, uh, if a dent uh, appears on the, uh, on the contact face, it may change the, uh, distrib uh, the stress distrib distributions. So um, I think that is hard to, uh, to uh, in this case, we can, uh, it's hard to uh, correspond to the uh, real, uh, real, really, uh, real, uh, real surface. So um, maybe uh, in the full scale, or in a full scale tech experiment, it will be better to uh, cor correspond for it. Okay, uh, thank you. I hope I interpreted your question correctly, more or less. <laughs> Uh, Martin, you have a question here, I think. Thanks. I have a question to, about the axle bearings and the, the debris. You uh, said that it's expensive for companies to replace the bearings. What does it cost not to replace them? <laughs> because um, what happens then is that you get, uh, in worst case, derailment. Yeah. Um, I can't answer it because I don't know. I know it's very expensive. <laughs> But, Paul, would you like to, do you know? <laughs> That's, we got the information we got from the industrial partner. Oh, well, of course, it, it does cost to replace the axle bearings, so uh, that's the maintenance work the, the companies have to do, and they want to wait with it as long as possible, but if they wait too long, then, then it breaks down, and then they have to stop the train. In worst case, you get a derailment from it. Yeah, That's yeah, but uh, because these bearings are used in the passenger train, so normally in Australia there's a standard after eight years, you have to replace the bearing without, or without that physically there's any damage. So, um, yeah, it didn't happen in the passenger train in Brisbane at the moment, but yeah, so I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, a final question, I think. Yes. More than a question, it's a comment about bearings. In Europe, we have a regulation, the TSI, that forces you to use uh, axle box uh, temperature sensors in and just check the, the sanity of, of the bearing. So any problem in the cage or in the lubrication can be checked prematurely, so you can take the bearing out, re-grease it, check it if everything's okay, so you can do ultrasonic tests and surface tests on the bearings and on the rollers and, and blah, 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 and if everything's fine, you re-grease it and you reuse it. So not all of the time when a, a, a bearing is apparently at the end of its life, it's really at the end of its life. It depends on how early you're able to detect if, ever, if something's going wrong inside. Just a comment. Thank you. Thank you. Now I have three seconds to say that uh, thank you, Hang Tao, Chang Ji, Somrita, and Chilin. You kept the time perfectly. Thank you for all the questions. <laughs>